Okay, um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me here and having me the opportunity to speak. So I will, I will talk about Primoros in uh, Finland. Um, as it has been emphasized a lot, um, but I will emphasize again, this is a very preliminary research and uh, because there is no research about Primoros in, in Finland. Um, <clears throat> So there has to be a lot, there's a lot of work which should be done. And um, in my presentation, I will um, focus more on the, more on the political um, side and on the research side. So I don't have really much uh, in this presentation also knowledge yet about uh, the effects afterwards. So um, what I will do in my presentation today, I will um, walk you uh, to the first application process of Primodos in Finland. Then uh, I will talk a bit longer about the withdrawal process because I think that's what most, most people are very interested in here because Finland was among the most first countries so uh, withdraw. Uh, I, I use the word withdraw here, not ban for a reason which I will explain later um, from the markets. Um, and then I will just brief, give a brief outlook um, about the research about which has been done after the withdrawal from the market, because there are some interesting studies, um, which I think might be very enlightened uh, to the overall history um, about promoters in Finland, maybe also further. So. Um, Primoros in Finland wasn't sold by sharing itself, but it was sh sold by a Finnish company, which is Suhta Mekke Um So this is a very big company, which is existing in Finland for a long time, and it sells a lot of different products, but it also has this kind of pharmaceutical line during the time, which doesn't exist anymore, which is Leiras. Um, and Leiras um, gave an application to the medical board uh, in Finland, which is the um, institution which is responsible for um, licensing of, of uh, medicine and um, different pharmaceutical products, um, had an uh, application. In the first application process started, I think, in 1964, um, gave this application to um, the medical board. Um, the application um, was it's, it's kind of a form which is to fill out, and um, the form draw a lot on um, medical research, German medical research about um, the effects of sexual female sexual hormones on early pregnant women. Um, we have studies from usually the mid 1950s and um, early 1960s, um, which this application took as proof um, that um, Primoros itself is not harmful for early pregnant women. Although all these reports uh, which are used in the application process state that the research is not enough which we are doing, but we presume it might be harmless. Um, so this was the application process. The um, it, license should have been for using Primoros um, as tablets and injections. So we have these two types, um, as probably most of you are aware of, of course. Um, which is very important in Finland to have these two types because they have to go a very different way. Um, so we have these two products which are licensed in 1966 as pregnancy testing and as treatment for secondary amenorrhea. Um, so we have these double, um, which I think it's also in most other countries. Um, Primodos was licensed by the Finnish Medical Board for five years, which is a normal process. Uh, the first um, any kind of most medical products are licensed for five years. Um, that's just the way it is, that's basically the law. Um, so we had um, these five years which the product was used in Finland as pregnancy test as for the treatment of secondary amenorrhea. Um, then in mid 1970s, there started a new application process to renew the license for promoters. Um, oral and for promoters simplex, so for both the injections and the tablets. Um, um, medication. Um, so uh, there's not really clear um, how the process worked because I, I'm still lacking a couple of classified documents about the whole process. Um, but there seemed to be during the application process any kind of concern from the medical board that um, there's something wrong with the tablets, not with the injections. The injections were no doubt in that um, point. Um, so the um, executive, uh, Jorma Richimäki, um, from, from Leras wrote a, a very extensive letter to the medical board, um, reassuring that uh, Primoros oral was um, harmless. Um, he was arguing that um, the medication had the same hormones um, as, uh, contains the same hormones that women anyway had in their bodies, so there's no harm to be. Um, and the, the doses was very, very low, he argued in his uh, letter. 
Um, so there should be any kind of harm for a possible pregnant woman through this medication. Um, however, um, the Medical Board of Finland wasn't really convinced by uh, Rihimeki's uh, argumentation and um, wanted another report and he, uh, they um, asked for a report by a Finnish gynecologist, which is Sakari Timonen, who was a gynecologist at the Helsinki University Hospital during that time. And, um, he is, his expertise um, was basically that he was, he was a gynecologist and had done several studies about um, female hormones and the effect of female hormones and the treatment especially of secondary amenorrhea. Um, so he had a certain expertise status here. Um, and Zachary Timonen then wrote in December 1970 um, his report. Um, where he explained that although uh, premortis oros, we just talk about premortis oral right now, not about the same things, um, is although it's well, well established uh, for a long time as pregnancy tests and also as a further treatment, um, that in comparison to what Ricky Mickey was saying, that he was arguing that um, premortis contained a high doses of hormones, um, of artificial hormones, which indeed can cause abnormalities <laughs> in fetus. Um, so he was basically contradicting completely what Leiras and Rehimeki was, was arguing. Um, he was very concerned about the effects um, of a pregnancy test, of an, uh, an oral pregnancy test, and he was arguing there was actually no need to have these kind of hormonal pregnancy tests because from his point of view, the methods for fertilizing urine pregnancy tests were right now easily uh, very well established and developed, so every doctor and clinic could easily do uh, urine pregnancy tests and there was no need to have any kind of hormone pregnancy tests. Um, <laughs> so, Timonon's final verdict um, was in this type kind of div the, um, divided because he argued that primordial oral was indeed dangerous um, for the women and the fetus, but he argued that primordial simplex as injection form was not dangerous and could indeed be used in a um, clinical environment. So um, based on, on this report, it's, what's very interesting about Zachary's uh, report is that in comparison to, to Ricky Mackey's report, he doesn't use any kind of sources. So he's not, he's not there's not clear where his informations are coming from. Is it from his own research? Is it from his own expertise? Or is he drawing off any studies? He's, he's not making this kind of evidence clear. In, in uh, opposition to Ricky Mackey, who was kind of referring to in the older studies, but somehow studies, in, at least. <laughs> anyway, um, the medical board uh, was convinced by, by Timonen's report and took it very seriously and then decided to um, not renew the license of Primordus Oral in this context. So um, the Primordus Oral license was not, um, not extended um, in early uh, 71, um, but the license for Primordus Simplex was again renewed um, in this context. Um, Leiras and Rihimeki didn't really took that as an, as an result and um, wrote another letter to the Medical Board of Finland to at least convince the board to license Primordus Oro again as uh, treatment for secondary amenorrhea, um, but not a pregnancy anymore, pregnancy test anymore, but uh, the Medical Board of Finland took at least Primordus Oro as a tablet box completely from the market. Um, but Primordus Simplex continued to um, be sold and used um, in this context uh, in Finland um, until 78, which is, I think, very interesting because um, at this point it was again Rihimeki and Leias who contacted the medical board of Finland and argued that they wanted to withdraw Primordial Simplex themselves from, from the market. So um, there was no kind of indication from the board itself to withdraw it, but from the company was selling it. And his argumentation was that um, it was anyway not used as pregnancy test for a long time, apparently. There's no evidence for me how to prove that, but um, only as treatment for secondary amenorrhea. But Ricky Mackey was arguing that um, lately there have been a lot of allegations, um, especially in the UK. He's referring explicitly to the UK um, about possible uh, causes of abnormalities. Um, of Primordial Simplex also, um, and he was also fearing negative publicity. Um, so in this kind of context, uh, the company uh, decided to withdraw uh, Primordial. He's also referring in his letter, very interesting, that um, there's still not 
enough research from his point of view to go in one way or another way. Um, but he's also referring very clearly that the mother company um, from where they, they got the medical sharing um, was not convinced by the allegations in the UK different from, from the Finnish company to make any kind of verdict um, to uh, still withdraw the medication. So it was kind of a very lonely decision by the Finnish company to then withdraw themselves uh, Primodos Simplex. So we have this kind of division that Primodos Oral was um, not renewed the license um, in 71, and Primodos Simplex, and then later as injection, was withdrawn by the company itself in um, 87. Um, what was very interesting in, in this form, um, after Primodos Simplex was withdrawn from the Finnish market, um, I found a, a letter by the German Medical Board, um, which was sent to the Finnish Medical Board in 78, which was basically a questionnaire um, why uh, the, the product was taken from the market. I, I don't know the answer, if there was an answer to this letter. I haven't, I haven't seen any uh, material yet about it. There might be an answer, but of course, very interesting to see the argumentation between the kind of political institutions about this. But um, apparently, the medical board in, in Germany was very concerned that it was taken from the market, and there were questions about why it was taken from the market, who took it from the market, the company or the board, um, or if they have any kind of evidence about any kind of uh, any harm which this uh, might have caused. So that was basically the story of Primoros in uh, Finland during a time. So after 78, it wasn't sold anymore. Um, but interesting enough, uh, the research continued in Finland still um, with kind of female sexual hormones and um, connected um, um, ideas. So there was this very interesting study, which is ethically very problematic, um, as I figured out, by Marty Pulkinen. It's the uh, guy over there, he's a, a Turku based um, gynecologist. Turku is a small city in uh, southwestern Finland. Um, and he uh, made a highly controversial study in the early 1980s where he had uh, a group of women who were seeking an abortion. Um, and he made them consent to his study um, to um, take um, the same hormones which were contained in promoters. Um, take the hormones, and then after the abortion, that he was able to uh, examine the aborted fetus. Um, which is very interesting about this study, that the study was financed by sharing. Um, so we have a very clear connection here. And um, he um, concluded his study after, after examining the, the fetus, um, that uh, any kind of hormones contained in these pregnancy tests have no effect on any kind of fetuses. Uh, they don't cause any abnormalities, nothing. Um, so he contradicted in 1984 when the, the report was published completely, which was already stated in 71 by Timonen. So um, it's very interesting. Uh, obviously, we can, we can figure out uh, who are, how this result came to uh, came to life when we look at the finances of the study. So um, that's very interesting, I think. Um, and there is a last study um, which was done in the 1990s, which is kind of related to that, I mean, um, Elena Heminik, um, who did a study for the National Research and Development Center uh, for Welfare and Health in Helsinki. Um, she was using data from the um, mid-1950s until the 1960s, 1963, so before Primotors was sold in um, Finland. Um, she, he used, she used data from maternity clinics in Helsinki um, about women who kind of received any kind of female hormone drugs during their pregnancy. So there's, there's not a direct link to promoters, but it, she's researching the same, same hormones. And um, she, she studied the data which was collected prior to it. And um, her focus was uh, kind of three, three focus in her study, which was first was um, if these kind of drugs cause cancer in, in the mothers later, if it caused cancer in the children, and if there was any kind of abnormalities. And her results were quite clear. She um, argued that uh, women who use any kind of female sexual hormone drugs in their early pregnancy were, did not have kind of any risk of cancer later, high risk of cancer. The children didn't have any high risk of cancer, but her result was that especially male infants had a high risk of abnormalities through female sexual uh, hormone drugs, which were exposed to in an early pregnancy. So she not only had, was looking at specifically infants, but also at this gender difference, that especially male infants might have been more affected than female um, um, 
incense in this context. So that's kind of um, the research, which was after, although the, the um, product of the drawn still going on um, in Finland, which still shows, I think, a very diverse picture and um, a very interesting picture. And, and it's very fascinating to see how, um, of course, the financing of the study. So I think we, the Pokinian study is it's one end, and, and the Hemingian study, study is on the other end, and how contradictory these studies are working with each other. Um, yeah, so um, what can be said as a form of conclusion, um, I think, that the, the history and the story of promoters in, in Finland was quite short, so we only had these kind of five years where the drug was really used in practice. Um, then the license wasn't renewed, so that's why I'm not talking about a ban in this point on more of a withdrawal, because if there wouldn't have been this five-year period where the kind of a new license was acquired, the medical board wouldn't have done anything by themselves. That's quite clear. So there wouldn't be any kind of further, further studies. Um, so when we had the first withdrawal and we have the second withdrawal um, in 78, when the company which was kind of selling the drug themselves uh, withdrawal. So um, I don't really see any kind of political indication from, from the Finnish government or medical board itself to withdraw the drug, but it came very much either in the process or uh, restored from the selling company itself. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.